February is American Heart Month, where we focus not only on love, but heart disease. And there's no better way to love yourself and others by knowing and understanding your heart health. February 22nd is Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day. And NCBA is proud to partner with the Alliance of Aging Research to bring more attention to heart valve disease in our NCBA community. I'm pleased to have Dr. Ann Simpson, one of our medical doctors on our board of directors. Dr. Simpson is a physician, an academician, and the former director of the Black Health Resource, Resource Center at the University of New Mexico and Associate Vice Chancellor for African American Health. Welcome, Dr. Simpson. Thank you. It is an honor to be here working with you all. Thank you, and thank you for everything you do for us. Let me just say, simply, what is heart valve disease? Heart valve disease, the way it is framed, it, people are talking about specific valves that are within the, the heart. However, that is not the entire story. Heart valve disease impacts the entirety of the circulatory system, our bodies. Now, within our bodies, we have multiple circulatory systems. Some we never talk about, which is the lymph circulatory system. That system has valves and the veins have lots of valves, but we're gonna talk about particular valves that are within the heart. So I also wanna talk a little bit more about some of the circulatory systems that impact um, the heart and also causes us to have problems when the diseases that we have, for instance, hypertension, mm -hmm. impacts directly on the valves. One is the coronary circulation. So the blood that leaves the heart usually goes out through the aorta, but that aorta also has branches that go to the muscle of the heart. As you see on the, on the slide, there are the ventricles, right, left, that is muscle, that is cardiac muscle. So there, there is a circulatory system that brings blood to that muscle to bring it the oxygenation that it needs and then to remove the, cardi the, the uh, carbon dioxide. That's one circulatory system. We have another circulatory system, whereas if you look at on the slide, the inferior superior vena cava, those vena cava bring blood from the rest of the body. This is blood, although people say it's deoxygenated, it is less oxygenated because it has brought oxygen to our entire system. And therefore we are now and it is bringing the carbon dioxide back to the heart. So that's one circulatory system. The next is the pulmonary circulatory system, which is if you look at, again, you see the pulmonary veins and they are bringing blood that comes into the right side of the heart from the, ven the vena cava, inferior and superior vena cava, the pulmonary circulation brings that blood into the lungs where within the lungs the blood from those pulmonary arteries because arteries bring blood out of the heart veins bring it back into the heart even though this blood has not been reoxygenated it is still leaving through an artery it goes into the lungs where within the lungs and the smaller vessels, the capillaries, that is where the gas exchange takes place. You 
leave off the carbon dioxide, pick up the oxygen, and then through the pulmonary veins, this is brought back into the heart, into the left ventricle, where it is pumped out. Now, giving you um, sort of a breakdown of how this happens, because when we think about valvular heart disease, I want to focus on one particular valve. And why am I focusing on one particular valve? Because of all the valves, this is the one that will demonstrate how things happen with the other valves. So we have valves that are the tricuspid valves, which is the valve that goes from the atrium, which is where the blood comes in from the vena cava, into the right side of the heart, the right atrium, goes into the right ventricle, and then, as I said, goes out into the lungs, and it comes back in into the left side of the heart. So the left side of the heart, the blood comes into the, from the lungs into the uh, left atrium and to the right, and to the left ventricle. So there are valves in all of these spots, and those valves can be problematic as well. If you look and see, you'll see there, there are um, little, looks like little white stringy things those actually are fibrous kind of tissue and they can be injured, um, they can rupture. But the biggest problem that we have, I'm going to demonstrate by having you think about, for instance, the aortic valve. So the reason I'm doing that is this is a primary source of blood coming back into the heart. Now the heart's function is a pump. It pumps and it's mechanical and it is mechanical and it is driven by electrical activity. So if you notice between the left and right ventricle, you have, again, that is muscle fiber, but within those fibers, is something we call the Purkinje fibers, and those are the electrical activity fibers. So when we think about the heart pumping, what happens is in the left atrium, there will start a pulse that goes down through the left ventricle, and also it's, be, it's happening in the right side as well, and you get a contraction. And that contraction itself is what pumps the blood out, whether it's going into the lungs, whether it's going to feed the heart muscle itself, or whether it's going throughout the rest of the body. This pump activity gets the blood flowing from your head to your toes and all places in between. So this is sort of a what I'm trying to make a quick and dirty look at the action of the heart and to sort of understand why the valves are so important. So if we look at the aortic valve, which is the main vessel that's coming out of the heart that's distributing blood up to the brain and down to the rest of the body. So as I've said, the blood that comes into the heart goes into the lungs to be oxygenated and pumps out. So let's talk about things that can happen to the aortic valve. The aortic valve is connected to the aorta, which is an artery. It's the main artery. And so that artery is connected to other arteries throughout your body. So you can have problems in those arteries. For example, hypertension. High blood pressure is pressure buildup within the arteries. So let's think about this. This heart is a pump, so it is pumping. And this heart is trying to pump oxygenated blood through the rest 
of your body. So there is a valve at the aorta between the aorta and the heart, the opening there. So when the heart pumps, the valve opens up, the blood flows out, everything's fine. However, if you've got a stiff pump and that stiff pump gives you a stiff valve, it's going to be difficult to get that blood pumped out of there. So you think about it as other mechanical objects you may have. Think of it as a hose. If you have a hose and you turn on the spigot, if the hose is stiff, stiff, unyielding, or has some sort of blockage in there, it takes a lot more energy to push it, a lot more effort. So when you have a stiff aortic valve, then what's going to happen is that heart muscle itself is going to have to try to exert more energy. And over time, this heart valve, because it's stiff, because maybe the corresponding artery is stiff, is going to just cause this heart muscle to continue to build up and to try and pump. So if that heart muscle cannot, and the stiffening of the artery and the valve continues to increase, then what's going to happen is that blood that's in the heart that can't get out is going to back up. And it's going to back up into the atrium and it's going to back up and have fluid overload in the lungs. Something we know of as congestive heart failure because the heart is failing. It is failing to get the necessary blood out to the rest of the system and even to, to itself, to the heart muscle. So you can have congestive heart failure as a bat, as a when you have this stiff uh, valve. And you can think about this in the context of other valves. You have the, the pulmonary valve. So if in fact you get a backup of fluid in that left side of the heart because you can't get it out through the aorta, you've got fluid built up in the lungs, that says you're gonna get fluid or blood build up in the right side of the heart where the blood is coming in. So thinking about it, this is a flow system, a system that is a mechanical object, but it's one that we need and it has a hugely important function. So you get the buildup and what's going to happen is, oops, you are going to have, um, you get um, the buildup of fluid in the lungs and therefore buildup of fluid throughout the rest of the system because it builds up there, it's going to build up elsewhere. And I know you've probably seen people in congestive heart failure who have swollen ankles, swollen extremities. So that is what we call fluid overload. And so one of the things that happens is they get diuretics to try and, and clear it off, clear off the fluid as you treat the disease with different medication. Now, one of the things that can happen is there are surgeries to replace the heart valve and you can do that, but there are also, um, balloon plasty, where the valvuloplasty, where you can go in and try to open up these valves because when they're stiff like that, they are described as for the aortic, aortic stenosis. It's stenotic, it's stiff, it's not opening up because the aorta has these valves and now they are stiff uh, because of the stiffening in the other 
arteries. And again, things that can cause that can be hypertension. High cholesterol is another thing that causes that. The cholesterol builds up and causes those calcified plaques and things that can settle on valves like the aortic valve. And so it causes these problems. There are other things that can cause this sort of thing, which are some um, immuno, some uh, immunodeficiency diseases. Um, also, um, looking at my list so that I don't get things like um, uh, rheumatic fever, stuff like that. Another thing that can cause you to have problems with the heart valve and causing some stiffening of it. Uh, cigarette smoking. Mm -hmm. That is something that we can control. Things like um, atherosclerosis. There are absolutely people who have an inherent, inherent condition of atherosclerosis. Um, it's familiar athero atherosclerotic disease. But for the general population, it is what we take into our bodies. And why is that important? It's important because that is a choice. We have a choice about what we take in and how we think about it. Now, it's, it's true, people don't think about heart valves, but they do understand that there are things that uh, causes high blood pressure, increase sodium increase cholesterol in our food and even though we know it and we don't feel the impact although we've been diagnosed we don't sort of think about and recognize the longer term consequences mm -hmm. which are can be heart valve disease and i'm targeting only one although there can be diseases in, in all of these valves be it the mitral valve, the tricuspic valve, or the pulmonic valve. But the aortic valve is one that uh, I think causes probably more problems than the others. And oftentimes when um, people as we age might have, when you listen to the heart sounds, you can hear a little stiffening of that valve, but it doesn't, these people may have just sort of, um, I, well, I guess I will use the term benign atherosclerotic aortic valve. You can hear it, but it's not causing them any problems. Now, what studies have shown is, although there is a little bit of, there is some aortic valve diseases associated with aging, the people who have the worst outcomes and problematic outcomes are those people who have a long history of hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesterol, and things like that, tobacco use, and people who have not been treated. And when I say not being treated, there are those people who, even though treatments have been prescribed, and it's everyone's right to not uh, take prescribed medications and those kinds of things, um, you might have to suffer the consequences because of what's going on, the heartening of the, and the valvular heart disease that you experience as a result. And, so Dr. Um, Simpson, let me ask you. But, so what uh -huh. symptoms what symptoms should prompt someone to uh, call their doctor to find out if they have heart valve disease? Well, first of all, your regular checkup and when you are getting your um, the the physician, your healthcare professional, nurse practitioner, PA, they're listening to your heart sounds. That is what they're looking for. Ah. They, so whenever you go in, they are checking. The other thing that they um, look at when they feel it's appropriate for you, especially someone who has long-term 
of um, hypertension, diabetes, usually at some point you get an EKG, especially if you're having types of symptoms. But the things that you might recognize that may be in between visits, if you have consistent swelling of your extremities, it's not going away, you don't know what's causing it, uh, that sh certainly should prompt you to go in. Another thing, in particular looking at the aortic valve, if you are not getting flow to your brain, adequate flow, one of the things that's going to happen is you can start feeling faint, even when you're doing nothing. And um, you start to pass out because you're not getting flow there. The other thing with having stiffening of that um, aortic valve and you're not getting adequate flow to your heart muscle itself, you can start feeling chest pain, angina, which is the chest pain that, or the pain that you get when you have uh, cut off of flow to your heart muscle. Mm -hmm. And that can be the sign of a heart attack. Uh, they call it an infarct, which means you might have some blockage or just not getting flow. So one of the things I, to think about in terms of what happens when you don't get flow, I don't know. I know when I was a kid, my brothers and I, we used to take a rubber band and tie it around the tip of our finger and it would feel cold and after a while it loses a bit of color but it starts to hurt that's blockage of blood flow to that to that area so thinking about pain from that that can happen to the heart but it's also the kind of pain that sadly people with uh, sickle cell disease when they have blockage in different areas so yeah chest pain would be one starting having uh, what we call syncope fainting, uh, swelling in the extremities, and that is because you're not getting the oxygenation that you need. Well, thank and you, Dr. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Simpson. We hope that this video will give um, our viewers some insight into what heart valve disease is now that you have a better understanding of your heart and how it functions and how you can be a better advocate for your own health. We thank you very much. And remember, February 22nd is Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day. Spread the word. Uh, we're ending uh, this video with the artist, Samira Bish, who is uh, Dr. Simpson's granddaughter. So it looks like understanding and knowing the heart runs in the family. And so her artistic work is fabulous, by the way. So thank you so much, Dr. Simpson, and thank you all. And we hope that you have become a better advocate for your own heart health.